safer and better alternative to using syringes and needles in endodontic treatment. This presentation became possible through the critical question raised by Dr. Anas Abdul in a response to a previous presentation by me. Thank you, Dr. Anas. Here's my response. Historically, the issues surrounding medications and irrigations have been controversial and misunderstood in the field of endodontics. However, over the past 20 years, significant progress has, has been made. Regarding your question about passive ultrasonic irrigation, that's PUI, I have no problem with it. I do not see it as an ir irrigation issue. It's actually part of the cleaning, mechanical cleaning, mechanical preparation. It's widely accepted in our field. However, your questions responded to my statement about drop by drop technique. I know that. And here is my answer to that comment. My philosophy, teaching, and practices regarding irrigation and medication are used, are based on research we've done at the University of Southern California back in 1982, followed by 40 years, 40 years of advanced endodontic training programs. We have continuously applied and improved these research findings, which I will talk about now. In every endodontic training office, clinics, schools, throughout the United States, at least in California and abroad. Working with Dr. Oglesby, we have demonstrated that by increasing the concentration of sodium hypochlorite from 2.6% to 5.2.5% and raising the temperature from 22.8 degree to 60 degrees, we can improve its ability to dissolve, dissolve fresh fixed and necrotic epidermal tissues of rats, which is histologically similar to the dental pulp. This improves solubility and reduces the time required for tissue dissolution from 52 minutes to 16 minutes. And the temperature, as I say, 22 to 60. We have found that concentration of sodium hypochlorite is more crucial, more critical than the temperature or the tissue type being dissolved. 5.25% is more effective than any other concentration lower. In collaboration with Dr. Patney, we have shown that using the food alternative polysorbate 80 can increase the penetration of sodium hypochlorite into root canals by decreasing the surface tension. With Dr. Piccinino, we demonstrated the process of placing sodium hypochlorite in the pulp chamber and then attempting to steer it within a 15K file. However, we do not do that method insufficient for carrying the sodium hypochlorite to the epical third. Our demonstration revealed that the canals must be enlarged at the epical third to a minimum size 30 five to 40 to allow the sodium hypochlorite to reach the most critical aspect, the epical third. Furthermore, we discovered that removing dentinal chips from the epical third requires applying pressure to the syringe needle, ensuring that the needle tip is in contact with the debris to be removed. This technique is a flushing technique, my friend. It's not an irrigation technique. It's not an irrigation action. 
The risks of pushing sodium hypochlorite beyond the apex, particularly at a high concentration, are evident, especially when the apex is open or there is a root resorption. So to address these concerns, we tested size 30 anesthetic needle instead of the 20 thrind Indolac and other needles at that time. We found that size 30 anesthetic needle effectively reached the apical third and successfully cleared all the debris. The simplicity and the safety of this approach is evident. So since 1982, we have used 5.25% sodium hypochlorite as an irrigant and a medicament. It's continuously fresh in the pulp chamber and canals throughout the endodontic appointment, the pulp extirpation and the canal preparation. We have exclusively used long needles size 25 and 30 in anesthetizing patients. So then when we need them for endodontic treatment, okay, the syringe is loaded with a fresh carbule of anesthetic, all right? Then the needle is bent according to working length measurement, okay? And inserted all the way to the apex, to the apical third, flushing out and then evacuating the sodium hypochlorite, which has been saturated with dentinal chips, bacteria, and debris. This is followed by depositing of a few fresh drops, drop by drop, of sodium hypochlorite in the chamber, and then working it within the canal using hand or rotary or ultrasonic tip instruments until the can root canal preparation is completed. I firmly believe that flushing with anesthetic solution is more effective, easier, and safer and cost-effective approach compared to the many available commercially irrigation systems, syringes, and needles, etc. I really trust that this presentation on drop by drop is a better alternative, safer and better in this very important step in endodontic treatment. I hope I contributed to your understanding of this issue and I really thank you for listening.